Brentmore Country Club was one of those places where they cut the grass with nail scissors. You needed relatives on the committee just to order a drink, and William Randolph Hearst would have fainted at the value of their art collection. But among the lounging aristocrats and faded millionaires, some of the newer members didn't fit the backdrop. Men like Hugo Candless, a big-time lawyer out of Reno, with an elegant wife, a mansion in Bel Air, and all the old world charm of a cop beating up a drunk. Want another licking? Not unless I have to, Mr. Candless. You're not as stupid as you look, Dial. Show her off your sweat. We'll talk business. To become a member of the Brentmore, Hugo Candless must agree some very classy palms. Or maybe he found some interesting pictures of the chairman's daughter. Move your ass! Either way, anybody hanging around Hugo on a Saturday morning had to be short of friends or on his payroll. George Dial had plenty of friends. And that was something his boss could never forgive. Anybody hanging around the Wilcox Avenue police station on a Saturday morning had to be a pimp putting up bail, a lost child, or a private dick. I didn't have any gold teeth and was over 21, so once in a while they gave me the benefit of the doubt and threw me a case. When a cop like Violets McGee calls you on a weekend and tells you to come right over, there has to be a reason. Not to put five bucks on loneliness. I know his brother died. But everybody's brother dies sometime. Look, that don't confer no license, sir. Look, this is a big operation, and I need him there tonight. Why don't you sit down and put your hat on my desk? You sleep in this place? Yeah. We got a visitor in town, just out of San Quentin. Name of Parisi. Mops Parisi. Punch any bells? Sure, gambler joint in Reno, Grand Larson in Frisco, 15 years in San Q. And parole last week. Compassionate grounds. Ah. Uh -huh. Last Tuesday, Parisi hit town, and last night he was out at the club Egypt, advising the party. On what? Balancing a wheel. She goes the party runs roulette? Yeah, where you been? Desert Island? Roosevelt got re-elected, the dollar got devalued, and she goes the party runs roulette. But that's my problem. You got another one. Drink? No. I'd better keep a clear head. Well, Parisi's been shooting his mouth off. You were the arresting officer, weren't you? Me and half San Francisco Police Department. Well, your little friend from Reno ain't forgot you. Oh, that's nice. What is it when they stuff parrots with uh, sawdust? Taxidermy. That's what Parisi has in mind for you. Only with lead. Parisi couldn't kill time. Fine. You don't want to hear about a couple of hit men that just blew in from Reno. Huh? After that, we'll buy out Lieberman. In two years, I'll be the biggest attorney on the coast. Sounds like an exciting prospect. It won't be the way they taught you at Harvard, Dial. It'll take guts. You want me to come back with you? I think I can handle Esther by myself. George Dial had a very special yes. problem, women. A different girl for every day of the week. I didn't know it then, but he had just started moving in on one of mine. Hey, you're early. Don't you just look terrific? Well, thank you, kind sir. I hope you're hungry because they have oh, excellent food. Absolutely. Matic, where the hell are you going? Hey, you're going the wrong way. What's the matter with this thing? Matic, are you deaf? Turn around. You're going the wrong. What is this, Matic? The hell are you? McGee told me to skip town. Leave Parisi to the cops and get the hell out. Go up to Frisco, he said. See your old buddies. I told him I was saving myself for the grand tour of Europe. When he laughed, his teeth rattled. 
Trust him, he said. By Monday, the hitman would be back in Reno and Paris would be in the slammer. I went back to my executive suite to think. I'll tear you apart. I'll break you into little pieces. Turn this car around. What the hell are you doing? No, 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 no. I'll pay. I'll make you rich. Mops Parisi was a five-cent hood with a ten-dollar mouth. One of nature's little guys who can't get used to the act. Myself driving up the coast, fresh air, the open road. And I had a better idea. Your pardon, Mr. Dial, sir. I have a call for Miss uh, Ridden. How did you know my name? Ma'am, I just know all the other ladies. And ain't none of them called Ridden. Thank you, Mr. Dial, sir. Enjoy your luncheon. When you think you belong, they let you know you don't. Aren't you going to pick it up? Hello? Philip, how did you know I was here? Oh, blood test, fingerprints, usual routine. <laughs> okay, I called you hairdresser. Women always tell their plans to their hairdressers. Listen now. I got an idea I'd like to throw at you over dinner. Um, Philip, I already have a dinner engagement. How about tomorrow? No. No Mashira's party. Hold it, Philip. No Mashira? It was supposed to be a surprise. All the stars will be there. Philip, call me at home around 3.30, and then maybe we'll we can... We'll do at the beach house at 3 o'clock. What beach house? Marion Davies. One of my clients just closed a big deal with her. She'd like to pour a little champagne, chat around the pool, that sort of thing. <sighs> Philip, I'll call you later. Will you be at home? Okay. Bye. You keep a very full schedule, don't you? You only live once. Now, shall we order? I started telling myself that all that leaving town stuff was hooey. If someone wants you, sooner or later they catch up with you. Even a mug like Mops Parisi. But I wasn't going to sit around waiting for him to knock on my door. When a visitor blows into town, it's only good manners to knock on his door. Suitably dressed as a sign of respect. home to go to? It's all yours, Carita. I was just on the way out. You meet up with those guys? What guys? Last night. I tell them you back Monday. Yeah, what they look like? One is good looking, maybe. The other, not so much. Hey, you want a glass for that? Downstairs. I got glasses. I got another bottle, Carita. Why don't you take this one and share it with your husband, huh? That Sancho, last week he stepped out for cigarettes. Now he's living in San Bernardino.
its own version of the 23rd Psalm. My pool runneth over. People spend money as though they had it to impress people they don't even like. And nobody understood this better than Chico Zapardi. Evening, Mr. Marlowe. You with the Gandalf party? Nope. Listen, uh, park it close, will you, Max? Sure. Chico owned three hotels, a mailing company, and a radio station. But the jewel in his empire was the Club Egypt. Studio executives, syndicated journalists, major talent agents. Sooner or later, everybody who was nobody passed through these doors. <laughs> Gandalf party? Marlowe party. Is Mops in tonight? Huh? Little fat guy named Aparisi. I'm a friend of his. I'm a married woman, mister. I check hats. That's all I do. I believe it. you here? 180 pounds of lard, about five foot nothing with a big mouth. Easy? I heard he was looking for me. Figures. Boy, the things he was saying about you last night. Yeah, well, that was last night. Hell no. Goes on the account. What account? The Gandalf account. You're the backup, right? The protection. Is that what I look like, a hired gun? Hell no. But if you want in on the action, they're in there already. In where? Where the long bar used to be. That's where they got the new business. Didn't anybody tell you? No, but I'm sure of one thing. <sighs> if I was as thirsty as you people give me credit for, I'd be speaking to you from inside a jar at the medical school. Lieutenant McGee, please. Al Ginsberg from the Club Egypt. Lieutenant, is Marlowe part of the Gandalf party? Which one is Marlowe's car? Blue Plymouth. How many customers we got in tonight? You guys must be new here. <coughs> the name's Marlo. I'm a friend of Chico's, and before you ask, I'm not with the Gandalf party. Now, do I get in or do I call the boss? Guys, a P.I. The only difference between you and the monkeys is you need a smaller hat. The muscle on the door was as green as Chico's roulette table. I figured I had maybe five minutes before they drifted back in, hoping to unpress my suit. But unless Parisi had grown a foot taller in the last ten years, he wasn't in the room. Neither was Chico's a party. I'd have stepped right out again if it hadn't been for one thing. Annie Reardon. You got a loser's license? How'd you find me this time? 
Well, it wasn't easy. This thing doesn't have a habit of hitting on the evens, does it? George, this is a friend of my hairdresser's, Philip Marlowe. George Dial. Annie, this is the big one. It all goes on May West, okay? Just keep it coming. Look after the chips and these guys look after your dog. 300 of that's mine. Don't you like it? George has a system. So do they. This is your end of a flu. Yeah, I got a system, you got a system, everybody's got a system. It doesn't work in this stuff. How much did we lose? Five. Five thousand? Mm. All right, that does it, Frog. That does it. This game is rigged. I'm sorry, sir, you're mistaken. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and you're really French. This game is rigged, buddy, and I want to see your boss right now. I'm sure you are wrong. Yeah, 16 times in a row. That doesn't happen nowhere. This is rigged. 16 times in a row. Right, lady? Monsieur, please. You're creating a disturbance. You know what's creating a disturbance. Right now, Frenchie. Back on the door, boys. I'm handling the inside. Hey, shut up! Okay, Napoleon. We're on our way to Zapardi's office. That is, if you can make it under all that extra weight you're carrying. Well, who the hell are you? I ain't Gandalf, that's for sure. No, I'm Gandalf. So enjoy the party. Come on. You can't do this to me. I'm running the table here. Yeah, you watch. I'm walking right out. Take yeah. your hands off me. Yeah. I'm still only following the bouncing ball. Chico will kill you for this. That's very well. Move. Move. What the hell? I don't know who this guy is, Mr. Zabadi, but he come in downstairs and started pushing... He's as shame as that payroll was. What's on your mind, Marlowe? Well, crazy. You look better in your mug shots. What'd they do to you in San Q? Make you play happy families? You got something to say, Marlowe. You say it to me. Okay, I'll say it to you. There's a guy downstairs named a Dial. Your brave new wheel just took him for five Gs. What are you talking about? Hey, what are you... What are you get away from me? Now, what does this one do, Parisi? Light up his teeth? I don't shake down that easy. Oh, cut the crap, Chico. I got enough on you to change the color of your suit for 10 years, so you listen and listen good. Thomas Edison here is going to go downstairs and pay out Dial. Then you and me are going to have a little talk. Tell him. Do it, Luis. Mr. Zapati, there's a lot of people down there. I pay out this dial and everybody's going to get paid off. Shut up and do it. You just made a big mistake, my friend. And you made a bigger one. This place is down for the swamp, Chico. You're going under glass. For what? Spinning a wheel? The cops don't move on me, my lord. I got friends on top of the mountain. Yeah, what are they gonna do when the rap's homicide? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Didn't he tell you? Your little house guest here says he's running a contract on me because they have me rubbed out. You're crazy. Parisi, you still have all the personality of a paper cup. If I hear one more word about me copping a heel, I'm gonna crumple you up and throw you away. See you on the front page, amigo. Hey, shut up! Come on, snap it up, boys. He's waiting on you. Parisi had surprised me. It was 10 years since I'd made the arrest, but he looked 30 years older. Maybe this was a little sap's last throw, and maybe Chico was loading the dice for him. I thought of going back in to check on Annie, but I had this George Dial figured for a guy who, if you're not talking about him, he's not listening. Then I knew I should have gone back in. Freeze, right there. Don't even breathe, gum heel. Don't even breathe. I get in the car, real slow. He's clean, let's go. 
There was a faint smell of almonds in the car, like marzipan on a birthday cake. At first, I couldn't figure out what it was. Then I remembered. We weren't going to any birthday party. We hit the boulevard heading west. For some reason, half the LAPD chose that moment to head east. I savored the irony. We went on through Brentwood and out into the hills. It was a hell of a trip. Then the guys in front started having an argument, but I couldn't hear what they were saying. Bouncing over rough ground when the chauffeur leaned over and began to pull at something. And I could really smell it, that sweet smell of almonds. Cyanide. The gas they used to execute killers in Nevada. License plate was a privilege number. California 5A6. The owner was easy to find. Wilcox Avenue had a brand new file on him. His body had just washed up on the Santa Monica Beach, presumed drowned. His name, Hugo Candless. Of course, they ain't opened him up yet, but uh, the doc fixed the time, more or less. What'd he put on the car? Between 12 noon and 1. Blood separation didn't start till three, anyhow. You don't think he drowned, huh? <clears throat> Not enough water in the lungs. You want to know what I think? <coughs> Cyclone B. Or cyanide. Once seen, never forgotten, Phil. <coughs> Thanks, Charlie. You got time for some breakfast? No. I knew that name Candless from somewhere, but Nevada gas doesn't improve the concentration, and I couldn't remember where. By the time I dragged myself over to Annie's house, the sun was coming up. If the birds were singing, I didn't hear him. Okay, let me guess. You left the club without even saying goodnight, so you came all the way here to apologize. Then on the way, you stopped off at Musso and Frank's for a glass of freshly squeezed orange juice and lost track of time. Can, <clears throat> Can I use your phone? Oh, you don't look good. What'd you have with the orange juice? Marzipan. And borrow your car. How'd you get here? Passing truck. You got a cup of coffee. Oh, boy. Hugo Candless had lived pretty high, even for this town. 
A man like that collects enemies. It goes with the territory. His house was the kind of place that the Chicos of parties of this world copy brick by brick and still get wrong. can I do for you? Well, you can thank me for the five G's and invite me in. I'm here to see Mrs. Candless. Oh, well, she's, uh, she's at the morgue. There's been a terrible accident. Her husband drowned last night. I know. That's why I'm here. I need to ask her some questions. Well, you're welcome to wait, but, um, I doubt if she'll see you. She's in a pretty bad way right now. You a friend of the family? Junior partner, Canlis and Weintraub. <laughs> Condolence calls. They haven't stopped all morning. Listen, why don't you give me a call at the office tomorrow and uh, maybe we can fix up an appointment. Uh, it's the downtown number. I'll be there anytime after, say, uh, 8.30. Please excuse me. Go ahead. Talk to you tomorrow. I wanted to know a whole lot more about Hugo Canlis. Like who his enemies were. Like how the killers got their hands on his limousine. They'd have needed time to turn it into a gas chamber. But that's one question I didn't have to ask because the answer was coming up the driveway. Myself. But the look on that widow's face told me I'd be wasting my time. Mrs. Candless was not receiving visitors. Not today. I didn't think a couple of quarters would go too far with the chauffeur either. But at least he wasn't one of the guys who tried to gas me. That was something. I needed to talk to Violet McGee. do you think you are, Morrow? What? I tell you to walk away from Parisian. What do you do? You follow up one of the best operations we ever planned. You call the station house in the middle of the night and report a double slaying, and then vanish. In case you didn't know, that's an offense. I can explain all that. What do you mean I fouled up an operation? Parisi, you meathead. Parisian's the party. What are you talking about? I'm talking about illicit gambling at the Club Egypt. We stake the joint out. We put in an undercover man. Then just as the fun begins, this two-bit Seamus name of Morrow waltzes into the party's office and blows the whole thing sky high. Undercover man. It's a name we use when we plant a guy on the inside just before we bust a joint. Remember? Gandalf. Gandalf. What happened? Five minutes before we send in the cavalry, Parisi lambs out the back with the party and hightails it to the border. Why? Good question. Because someone made them nervous. Just in time. You got the picture? What about all this? You mean you can't work this out? The two mugs that jumped you were from Reno, Parisi country. A hotshot lawyer called Hugo Candless died last night because he threw away Parisi's case 10 years ago. And if there was any justice, you would be up there with him strumming a harp. Candless was Parisi's defense lawyer, wasn't he? Brilliant. Only he didn't do much defending. He took the money and let the case slide. Parisi had a hit list. Candace was top, you were second, and the DA was third. And I warned all three of you. But who listens to McGee? Who listens to McGee? 
Nobody listens to McGee. Parisi couldn't kill time. What happens now? What the hell do you think happens now? I filed the report. And I wouldn't count on getting your investigator's license renewed. Not in this town. If jail can break a man, I'd have given six to four Parisi fitted the frame. They don't parole you on compassionate grounds if you're liable to start a war and then run off like Jesse Owens, but that's exactly what Parisi had done was a party right behind him. On the way back to Annie's house, I couldn't stop seeing Candless, that twisted face on the slab. I thought about his iceberg wood on the prose from Reno about Zapardi and George Dial, and suddenly there it was. How's the hangover? I was looking right at it. like you could use a drink too. I well, thank you, Philip. I'd like a small gin with a twist of lemon. Of course, my dear. Crushed ice or cubes. Now, who shall we drink to? The Astors, the Cabots, or both? Danny, how'd you come to meet George Dial? At a very boring party. He was the only one there without poor hands. And then came expensive restaurants, flowers, a full treatment. I think I better tell you, Philip. Some girls enjoy things like that. And just occasionally, the conversation lightly shifted to thoughts of P. Marlowe. Why not? You're a fascinating, captivating man with a great future behind you. So after a while, he had a pretty good idea of where I eat, where I garage my car, and things like that. Is it a secret? Yesterday, a man named Cantless disappeared at lunchtime. His body washed up on the beach at midnight. George Dial was with you every minute of that time, wasn't he? Except when I was changing, it destroys the magic. Okay, Philip, what is it? You're not gonna like it. You've been used. Used? How? First to set me up, then as an alibi. You're not serious. Murder is. Has somebody been scrambling your brains? We don't operate that way. The report's closed and the answer is no. I don't care who you've been talking to. You can go talk to the Pope's Tomcat. The answer is N O no. What did he say? He said yes. what this is in case I have to tell the doctor. When's Dial expecting you? 8.30. Wouldn't it be terrible if Norma Shearer had a dress exactly like mine? Yeah, but you're not going. I know. But imagine their faces. Open your purse. I just paid. For this. Philip, I don't think I can use it. Nobody can. It's empty. But it still scares people. Now, when we get there, I want you to let me out and drive around the block a couple of times. Excuse me. Do you have a doggy bag for this? Annie, we have to go. And the pickle. He adores pickle. Do you have a dog? You look like you should have a dog. They make wonderful companions. And if you can stand the stains on the carpet and the other little things in the corners, I highly recommend any lonely, downcast person to throw caution to the winds. Annie? Get a dog. I'm ready.
Philip. She's at home. I saw her through the window. Now, whatever happens, just keep talking. I'll do my best. You take care of yourself. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Anne Reard, and I'm a friend of Mr. Dial's. Would you please tell Mrs. Candace I'm here? Oh, it's beautiful. Hallway. I'm But do keep out the night air. It's very bad for bronchial condition. Do you have a bronchial condition? No, sir. Is Mrs. Candace expecting you? I won't have a drink, thank you. But you will get my name right, won't you? But I... Reardon? Anne Reardon? Yes, sir. I don't think we've met, Miss... Uh... I know, and I hate to barge in on you like this, but I've got to talk to you about George. You're a friend of Mr. Dial's. Oh, friendship can take so many meanings, can't it? And you know what they say about Hollywood. It's no place for a girl to find a boyfriend, especially her own. I don't understand. Try. <laughs> said what? That your husband carried more insurance than the Prudential. And that made up for everything. Listen, little miss, whatever your name is, I don't know what game you're playing, but I'm calling time. Please leave. Now. There's something going on out there. But there's more going on in here. It could be a murder investigation. What did you say? <laughs> Call the police. Don't move, Mrs. Candless. This thing's kind of unstable. <laughs> Jezebel, call the police. Yes, sir. Knows them. Sit down, Jezebel. <laughs> Why don't you pour us all a drink, Mrs. Candless, and we'll while away a happy hour discussing the dear departed and how much you miss him now that only his money is left. Who are you? The other woman. Dial's address. He already lived well. On Candler's money, he could live a whole lot better. For me, the place was perfect. One of those buildings where they have a service elevator to the garage and only one guy on the desk. Can. I'm looking for George Dial. Mr. Dial, apartment 413, fourth floor. Thanks, Mac. Hey, what's your name? I'm supposed to announce you. No, 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 wait. <clears throat> Listen. See, I'm an old friend of his from his railroad days, and I want to surprise him, okay? Still supposed to announce people. That's what I get paid for. Yeah, sure it is. Um... Well, you wouldn't have enough change for a five, would you? No change at all. I didn't think so. I never knew Mr. Dial ever worked on the railroad. Don't worry, got you covered. <laughs> Thank you. 
all wrong. Annie means absolutely Annie. nothing to Who me. Who said anything about Annie? I said your lady love. Her name is Esther. Mrs. Esther Candless. Your boss's wife. You remember your boss. The one who got drowned on Parisi's orders. Only it wasn't Parisi and he didn't drown. Pick up the phone. If you think I'm going to say anything to Esther... Get the number! will it take you? 30 minutes. And tell him to bring Harry with him. Casanova and I are on our way. Sure will. See you soon. Back off. Slowly. Keep your hands where I can see them at all times. How are you going to blame this one on Parisi? do is make one phone call. Marlowe. Who too? Your hitmen are in wooden boxes. <laughs> hitmen. I'm calling the police. You remember the police? Or the people who send you to jail for breaking into other people's apartments? I like your style. Unfortunately, it's mine. <laughs> Smells of class. <clears throat> no class. Marlowe, you got it wrong. I never used Annie as an alibi. Well, why should I do that, hmm? And I had nothing to do with any attempt on your life or on Hugo's. What's wrong, Dial? Didn't you ever take a ride in your boss's car before? Take a closer look. Real luxury, huh? Fully customized. Front and back. I don't know what this is about. Surely we can talk. Yeah, sure we can on the inside. No, no, no. Big car west on sunset and out through Brentwood. Dial knew where we were headed, all right. The further west we drove, the more money he offered. Marlo, I haven't done anything wrong. I mean, Annie. I almost got to Annie, feeling sorry for friend. it back there. Oh, that's all. Are you listening to me? Then I remembered the way Candlas looked in the morgue, and I put my foot down harder.
Try another. Loosen your gun a lot. And stop looking like a cop. When the hell did you get this? Stray dog loaned it to me. And he told you who was in the back. Huh? Oh, please, I got it coming out of my ears, huh? Where's the proof? It's up to you. I told him you were a hood who likes gassing people. And you sing me a song? You ask him right, he'll sing you an opera. He looks like some movie star. You didn't tell me he looked like some movie star. <laughs> Harry, take a look. Harry agrees. Okay, Mr. Movie Star, come on out. We're going to give you a screen test. You ever take a test before? Well, this is how we do it. I ask a question, and you answer it. Huh? And no broom, okay? Now, how much did Mrs. Candless pay my friends from Reno to cool off the old man? Two grand? Three grand? How much? How much? How much? What? Two? And then you paid them to gas my buddy here, right? Make it look like mops. Poor little mops was killing everybody he didn't like, right? Yes. Well, that was stupid. Everybody knows Parisi couldn't kill time. He passed the test. Back to the studio. Ah! How do you like that? Avoiding publicity, huh? He's worse than garbled. <laughs> Which one's the cellar? The cellar book is a small one. Good afternoon, Miss Reardon. How are you? Hmm. I have a call Bye. for uh, your table. Thank you. No trouble at all, Miss Reardon. It's a pleasure to see you again. Enjoy your luncheon. I don't know how you do it. I mean, I don't even know how we even got in this place. They never forget a face. Hello? It's for you. Marlo. Oh, hello, Violets. What? It's down here on the expenses, in black and white. P. Morrow, one large scotch whiskey. Gandalf account. I can't authorize that. Well, I'm coming over there to talk to you about it. Who told him I was here? Can you trust your hairdresser? You're Mr. Marlowe. That's what it says on the door. You have to help me. Next on Philip Marlowe, Private Eye. That man's been dead for hours. What's the game? Tinseltown's latest clean-cut heartthrob takes a powder. Varsity Day. Over a year in the making and the biggest picture Sonny Wallace has made so far. That kills him. My guess is he died of hepatitis. If you hadn't, the drugs would have killed him in a couple of years anyway. He wouldn't be the first. The scenario reads cover-up. Marlowe, I don't think you understand what's at stake here. Timing is crucial. But murder is more convenient. And unless Marlowe does a fast rewrite, 
The bad guys are going to win. Powers Booth probes the smart Alec Kill. On the next episode of Philip Marlowe, Private Eye.